That's pretty awesome, Brad. Tell me a little bit more about that. I'm not sure if that, I mean, yeah, I'm glad you played that one. But in that one with Brad, I didn't really go into the details about the, the evidence for the glass guy. I, never, well, I, I missed a few couple things, but that's pretty interesting. Did you like? Did you meet with him like after class or something, or did you go to, into his office? Or well, that's pretty interesting. You know, I did that once too. I, I walked into a university college a physics department. <laughs> <laughs> just you and him he's a younger guy cool I was at the University of Florida I just walked in I'm going to go talk to a physics teacher set the, set the record straight <laughs> so I just strolled into his office and obviously he, he's like oh, I don't have time for this blah 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 I'm like okay fine so I just continue walking throughout the halls there and there was, this, there was a room called, uh, <clears throat> what was it called? Graduate students' room. There were like graduate students in there. So I went in there and I, I talked to them. I convinced a girl that was, that was in the room. That chalkboard there, I drew it on the chalkboard and everything. That was pretty cool. You were just bouncing ideas back and forth. You die not even feeling sorry for yourself. Is that you, Nathan? 482. What's up? I started my journey with this knowledge by seeking for the answers of truth. I always knew that the earth didn't rotate, you know, inside, intrinsically, your intuitive knowledge. So when I was a little boy, my brother said, you yeah, know, the earth rotates. I'm like, what are you talking about? That's not true. No, it doesn't. Uh-uh. But it wasn't until later on in life, like when I was like in my, oh early 30s that I really started investigating things and I went to the Bible originally I used to you know it's like you're peeling off layers of truth I used to go to just a, a non-denominational charismatic Christian church they predominantly read from the New International Version of the Bible. And then, you know, once I started going through some hard times at home, I realized there's something I'm missing here, so I started investigating things, you know, right before, like, Y2K, the big Y2K scare. I was like, I gotta find out what's going on. Actually, even before that, like when I was like 18, I was like so worried that the world was going to end. I would like cry to my mom, Mom, the world's going to end, the world's going to end. <laughs> and so, but yeah, back prior to Y2K, I was just like, I got to investigate things. So like, you know, I had internet access and start reading about the different Bible versions. So I, I realized or came to the conclusion that the King James Version was most accurate version of the English Bible, and so you know, I was a King James King James onlyist for a couple of years, and that put a wedge between my friends, my Christian friends. You know, so then, but I would still keep on going, investigating. I would like read, I would take things in Scripture seriously, like literally. Sometimes when I talk about the universe, I talk about the sun moving. Psalm 19 as a strong man, strong man that runs a race and its circuit to the end of heaven and then other verses were said the earth, earth shall not be moved so I said this is ridiculous there's no spin to the earth no 
And then, then I started realizing that there's like, there was people online that held the same beliefs, that there's no spin to the earth, a geostationary universe. And so I was a geocentrist for a couple of years, debating people online or whatever, calling them out on their baloney. This is not, there's no spin to the earth. There's so many experiments to prove there's no spin to the earth. One time I was debating this one evolutionist guy about the rotation or the or the non-rotation of the Earth, and then he brought up this concave Earth scenario. It's the first time I heard of it. I'm like, whoa! Wait a minute! Whoa! What are you talking about? And he's like, yeah. The only way I would actually believe that there's no spin to the Earth is if it was concave. And he brought up this Egyptian mathematician. Called Mustafa Abdel Qadar, and he created this mathematical construct which placed everything on the inside of the earth, and the earth being the container to the entire universe. And so I would like investigate that. And I would look, I found Ralph Kepler's head website. He's a German guy who has who, who holds to the concave earth theory. Then he, he showed all the studies that Cyrus Teed had conducted. The rectilinear experiment, other experiments with optics, Tameric plumb bob mine shaft. I'm like, it didn't. I didn't accept it right away because I was, you know, once you like, once you believe something so strongly, it's like it's very hard for you to just let go of that belief and embrace something else. But so it was a transition time for about three days. I was just like racking my brains. I just knew though it was right. It was right. All the evidence was there. And the Bible actually testified. It was more it, more so to a concave earth with the heaven inside the earth than just a regular plain old convex geostationary earth. So I accepted it. And then I realized that the Bible also mentioned that there's a glass sky. And so, wait a minute, you're missing something here, Rolf. There's a glass sky after the flood. That's how the rainbow is formed. There was a glass sky that formed. Hey, 426 is gone. What did I smell a few times? I'm sure it did. Evad Philly. And then I, um, I read up on Cyrus Teed, you know, the glass sky, and, like, and then I would start just going on, like, conspiracy forums. The first main forum that I started talking about the glass guy was back in 2005 on above top secret you know that main that's like the biggest conspiracy forum out there <coughs> and I just said what it uh, what did I say I said Mike I forgot the title of the thread why can't you why can't why can't there be glass in the atmosphere or something like that how is it that there's no glass in the atmosphere? And, you know, you get the general ridicule initially. But it's like, once I started just accepting the truth, what is said in scripture, all this physical, tangible evidence would just fall right in like pieces from a puzzle just fitting per perfectly together. You find out where tectites come from, the mystery behind them. Well, it's no longer a mystery if there's a glass guy. You find out where the Libyan desert glass came from. It's no longer a mystery. You find out where the mega crime meters are coming from. And so it's like everything just kind of fit together perfectly. There's more, there's more evidence. There's a real glass guy. And then you realize NASA's a bunch of bullshit con artists faking everything. And you realize it's a big perpetrated lie, a veil cast over all of humanity. Motivation to generate income, money. I mean, you know, it's all, it's all about that. Look at how much revenue they raked in by saying they went to the moon. Tang or other corporations. It's a big money making operation. And that's it's all about you know, whenever you're trying to make money and something like that. It's all about deceit. And so So I would just keep on talking about it. Keep on realizing that it started to fit together and then 
But at that time, like 2005, I didn't think I was Christ. I just thought, you know, I'm a Christian, you know. Jesus is up in the middle of the earth somewhere. And it was the first time you heard about concave earth theory? 2003. Some guy told me, his name was Edward Babinski. He's not even a Christian, he's an atheist, evolutionist guy. And he brought up this Egyptian mathematician dude. And that was the first time I heard about the theory, and then I started doing investigating. If that's just lying, then they are in on the truth. Are they keeping the masses intentionally dumbed? Out because they don't have kingdom ashes? Because the masses don't have it? Yeah, that's the thing. There's a, kind of like a duality thing going on there with the powers that be, the Masons or whatever. Because, you know, I, I do believe that there's people within the government that know all about me. And they know the kingdom is coming. And so it's like... It's kind of... You think of the same concept. Even God. You know, you read in Scripture, Psalm 102, he wraps himself covers himself like a curtain you know he's hiding Isaiah 45 says verily thou art a God that hides thyself so truths are intentionally hidden sometimes and it's only for those who have the actual tenacity and the integrity to seek them out and to find them so it's like you know why should the powers that be reveal truth to the ignorant masses they don't deserve to know the truth unless they fully truly investigate it with empirical objectivity. The people that the government know what to do. Thank Hitler. Thank Hitler every night bef for being way more awesome than them. <laughs> what? saying so yeah I mean there's a few incentives for keeping the truth monetary people's unworthiness to receive the truth their smell can get them a brand when do I think the sun will stop? I think it's going to stop in less than two years. Any any time between, you know, now and two years. Just a guess. We'll see if this martial law thing that this so-called informant told me about May 15th, 2015 pans out to be true. The mark that I created? Tell us that we all must be marked out of the heaven with the baptism. Yeah, that's the thing about the Bible. You can't take it at face value sometimes. There's twists and turns in the Bible. Who can make straight that which God has made crooked? got to be careful because what you, you got to watch your heart and everything because there's a lot of fundamental Christians who read the Bible literally they take it literally and they become their hearts are wicked their hearts are filled with judgment and elitism I'm saved and you're not you're going to hell you really have to rightly divide words of truth and falsehood. There's falsehood in the Bible too. There's reverse interpretations, reverse encodings. It's not going to be at face value all the time. Now if you understand anything about Marx, you really need to cross-reference it with other verses because the book of Revelation is all about inscrutable mystery. It's not, you're not going to take it at face value. You need to go to other places in the Bible. Go to Ezekiel chapter 9, verse 4. 
What's it talk about? It talks about God telling Ezekiel to tell his man with an inkhorn to mark people's foreheads with a mark all throughout the city of Jerusalem. Those mark all the people who are grieving, who are lamenting for all the atrocities committed in this city. People whose hearts are contrite and broken, they get marked, okay? Now what are the marked, what, do they, what happens to the marked? They get spared. Those who are not marked get slaughtered. A mark is a good thing, especially if it's God's mark, only if it's God's mark. Cain was marked for protection. You're supposed to press on toward the mark of the high calling in Christ Jesus. Philippians chapter 3. Peter talks about receiving your crown. 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 4. Or James talks about it. Crown of glory, crown of life. Chapter 1 verse 12. What's this crown? The mark, my mark, is the crown. It's the crown you've actually been waiting for. Stephen means crown. That's your crown. Crown of glory in the hand of the Lord, a royal diadem. Wormwood. Mm -hmm. What's wormwood? I'm not sure what wormwood is yet. What do you think it is? Just fall to your knees and just ask for forgiveness. I don't want to go to hell. I don't think you're going to go to hell, Ronnie. A hey, big C two one seven four zero. So this mark that I have, you have to ask, ask yourself: Is this the mark of the beast? Is this the seal of the living God? Or is this one and the same? Is it both? Ultimately, it's a covenant. It's a covenant that you're making. If it is going to be implemented, it's a covenant you're making between God and yourselves. And if you read Jeremiah chapter 31, it says, A new covenant will I give unto you. A new covenant. I will write my law upon your heart and in your heart. So there's, some people have this marked, literally, a tattoo. Um, what, does that, uh, what does that represent? A tattoo represents ownership. The branding mechanism. You are owned by God. So if you were the seal of the living God, you are making a public display, an acknowledgement and humility that you are owned by God. Psalm 50. Psalm 50 talks about a covenant. It says, Gather my saints together, those that have made a covenant with me by sacrifice. What's the sacrifice that you are offering? You're offering your bodies as a living sacrifice. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. To present it to be holy and acceptable uh, acceptable before God. The sacrifice, you're sacrificing your body by getting a mark, by showing that you are approved by God. 
It's a very humble thing to do. It has nothing to do with... You know, that's why you got to check your heart. It has nothing to do with evil or wanting your lives to be... Pro it is about wanting your lives to be... You will, your lives will be prolonged. But it has nothing to do with anything evil. It's actually bringing you into a relationship. A close relationship. A literal personal relationship with the new Christ, me. So, that's what you really gotta ask yourselves. You're being tested. True believers are really being tested. Is this guy really the Christ? It's that many shall come in my name and say that they are Christ. He's just another one of those false prophets. Really? Think Jesus is coming back from the sky? Let me just ask you a philosophical question. With all the evil going on in the world today, you think God and Jesus, who are all supposedly all powerful, are just sitting back there and just letting children get abused, raped by adults? disease being stricken all throughout the land, hunger, poverty, crime, rape, and you have this Jesus dude just sitting up there, and maybe God the Father too, just sitting up there watching, <laughs> let's just wait some more, we're, sa we're sadistic bastards, we're just going to watch these people suffer, I don't think so. I don't think that's how it works. In order to enter the kingdom of God 2,000 years ago, you would have to have been born again. That's a literal rebirth. It's not a spiritual turning over a new leaf. Ah, I have the Holy Spirit inside me. Now I'm saved. No. I'm talking reincarnation. That's a lot of the reasons why Jesus, notice I say Jesus, spoke about the Son of Man, the coming of the Son, Son of Man in the third person, just how I'm referring to him in the third person. He is referring to me in the third person. It's a reincarnation. So, but you know, it's like ultimately I don't, I mean, I want. I want to convince you this, but there's going to be a point in time, like right now is just a period of mercy, because I'm not in authority right now. I'm just sitting back. It's like a, a pre-judgmental grace period. I'm letting you know who I am. I'm educating you into the world, the universe, the kingdom, having kingdom consciousness. And so... But there will be a time where I enter into authority, judgmental authority. It's not necessarily I'm going to change my attitude towards people, it's just that I'm, you know, justice is blind, you know. Oh, time to stand before me at the Bema seat. Oh, you're not wearing a mark. Sorry, you can't come into the kingdom. You're going to perish. You're going to be detained in a FEMA camp. I mean, the harvest is all about two people going to two different places the barn or the burn first Matthew 13 according to Matthew 13 people the terrors the evil people the goats they get gathered together in bundles to be burned to be burned then the wheat is gathered into the barn so you have FEMA detention centers all throughout the land and you have underground facilities you have the burn and you have the barn. So I would like to think that there would be a grace period for even when martial law is implemented, when people initially go to FEMA camps because they're going to reject me, that they would have time to be educated into the kingdom. I mean, obviously, I wouldn't just want them to stay in there and to be burned when the sun stops and burns up the whole world. I would want them to have a chance to repent, to understand who I am. 
a window of grace even then, even then. But not forever. Time is running out. So. time left. I'm doing exactly what you see me doing. He that believeth shall not make haste. Okay. I have kingdom consciousness on my mind. I'm not seeking to get a job somewhere to enter into this perverted system which is directly opposed to the kingdom of God. I'm waiting. I'm educating. I'm being patient with people. And I'm continuing to educate people. Yeah, Ron, it's always it's usually a minority, a minority that gets saved, isn't it? A remnant, a tenth. But we'll see, you know. When the day comes when I'm world renowned, focus and attention is put onto me. People have the chance to go back, see all the content I provided for people, see all my videos, have a chance to realize, to humbly realize, the duplicity and hypocrisy in their hearts. They call themselves a Christian like you 814 when you don't acknowledge me as Lord your hypocrisy your judgment is evident A full blown sickening return gross extension of the earth <laughs> Merciful, kind. It's my kindness that leads people to repentance. Anyway, yo, four twenty four. How's it going? Mm -hmm. New 
heaven and new earth. Yep. Well, when the sun stops and the ice unravels like a scroll, decimates the world, <coughs> the sun becomes seven times as bright, burns up the world. Obviously, that this current earth will become the old earth. And the area protected by the moon shadow, the umbra, when the sun stops and the moon stops and locks underneath it, causes a stationary solar eclipse, that land will be replenished. And it also talks about the healing of the nations in Revelation chapter whatever, 20. And so, yeah, it will be replenished again. A new heaven. A new heaven. I believe that the glass sky is going to bow down closer to the earth. We're going to build a shaft, elevator shaft to the top. That'll be the throne room. Retards a little deserve in life. More than these people. Why don't I have the chat up there? Good, how are you doing, 146? How are the 12 wise men going to be? Well, I think I'm just kind of counting them along the way here as I interact with them. I mean, people are all reincarnated, so the disciples are reincarnated too. citizens, government. I suppose one of these days I'll just sit down and pick 12. Revelation. Hmm. Well, let's bring up that verse and see it. You know what chapter it is? <laughs> Revelation 12. Thirteen. Sixteen. Twelve seven. All right. Let's start the whole chapter. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven, a woman clothed with the sun, 
and the moon under her feet, and upon her head a crown of twelve stars. Now, a lot of people, Christian eschatologists, prophecy people, they look at the constellation Virgo, don't they? The constellation Virgo. Welcome back, Amelia. And they wait to see when the moon is lined up below the feet of the Virgo constellation. I take an entirely different approach to that stuff. And she, being with child, cried, travailing in birth and pained to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven, and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and ten horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as born. And she brought forth a man-child who was ruled all nations with a rod of iron and her child was caught up unto God and to his throne. <laughs> You're going to laugh when I tell you my interpretation of this. You're probably going to think it's kind of sick <laughs> and the woman fled into the wilderness where she hath a place prepared of God that she should feed her there are a thousand and two hundred and three score days and there was war in heaven Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and the dragon fought him against his angels and prevailed not neither was there place found anymore in heaven the great dragon was cast out and the old serpent called the devil and Satan which to see the whole world was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him uh, well, I think a lot, I don't know. Obviously, you know, there was a point in time where they talk about in the past where the sons of God, the Nephilim, rebelled against God, and so they were kicked out of heaven. A third of the angels were kicked out of heaven. So that part could be referring to that in some way. But I tend, sometimes, and especially like in Revelation, sometimes I'll strip away all the morality meanings behind some of the verses good and bad and I'll just look at it as code to be interpreted and so um, I saw this particular chapter completely different than the way most people see it hold on a second Ooh. <laughs> so the way I see it is code, like I said code in constructing the new kingdom of God in Australia. And so I see the woman, actually, she's on her head. She's standing upside down. So the twelve crowns on her head are the twelve gates of the city of the new Jerusalem in Zion. And she's giving birth to a man-child who was caught up into heaven. And so I see that as <laughs> I have I have a drawing of it it's kind of disgusting but the rod of iron is actually the elevator shaft I'll just give you a link to it because it's a little bit obscene and so the serpent water out of the mouth of the serpent. It's all its all about irrigating the new world. So that there's actually water that's coming down from the heaven, from the outer shell, the outer casing of the elevator shaft. And it's flooding over the city, the new Jerusalem, the tower, and it's going through the gates of the city, and it's irrigating, it's replenishing the new land, making it all verdant and everything. 
And so that's how I see that. The Re Revelation 12 lady. As far as like Michael fighting the dragon, I don't know. Maybe that was just added in there for drama. What you getting at there, Steve? I drew that in prison. <laughs> so caught up unto heaven, the throne. See, the throne is being caught up. The rod of iron, the throne, the water, the woman. The moon is under her feet because her feet are upside down. <laughs> she has some big <laughs> and a broken toe, yeah. And their head smashed through their desk, and their name tag will tip over. <laughs> what? These are like old drawings I did. Here's another one. Here's the one, the throne room. Once you get at the top, you have the seven, seven spirits of God. They're just like seven flames. You have the elevator, the Willy Wonka elevator. And of course you're holding a kid. You know, it's, it's for kids. The kingdom of God is all about children, right? So it's like a big amusement ride. It's not just going to be me sitting on the throne, it's going to be other people. Everyone's going to like take turns going to sit on the throne. Four living creatures are just like, you know, creatures you see on an amusement park ride. Come on, just lighten up, people. You guys take things too differently, too religious. Got the 12, 24 elders are casting their crowns. It's a gold, or they're creating hydroelectric power to power the city. The crowns are the actual bowls in the, in the hydroelectric turbines. Makes sense to me. <laughs> Creep. How's it going? the tower there is the, my father there's your father's house there are many rooms the city of God the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven why is it coming down from heaven because there's an elevator shaft it's the it's, a, it's compared to the bride right it looks like a wedding cake there's 12 gates each gate is one pearl tower in your fetch <laughs> That's Shaft, Rower, Todd. I said Rower and Todd. <laughs> I meant Rod and Tower. On the top. Here, there's, there's a rendering of the top. See the turbans, the gold turbans, the 24 elders casting their crowns. Willy Wonka. Todd and Rower. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they talk about making sky elevators, <laughs> carbon nanotubes. Well, you yeah. know, this is a little bit more realistic. It's not going to go however they, however high they think it's going to go, thousands of miles. No, we're just talking about seven miles here. Seven miles to the top of the glass sky. Willy Wonka. Wooey. 
Willy Wonka. Yeah. This is my plans. Temple plans. The Messiah has the plans of the temple. Right? There are. There's the new, there's the new temple. The new Jerusalem. Big me. Anyway. Can't fix sick. Not even the kingdom will do that. Got some super condu super conducting anti gravity for the throne. Look at this stuff. This stuff is sick. <laughs> it's wicked. The flower of life on the floor there. Got the four beasts, the four living creatures. Well, actually, they're dead. <laughs> they're just made out of gold. Come on. So, let's talk about something else. Looks like the Ark of the Covenant. Well, no, I don't know about that, but that's Old Testament, right? You ever hear Christians say that? That's Old Testament. The Ark of the Covenant. Law. That's Old That's Old Covenant. Extraterrestrials? I believe in subterrestrials, not extra. Nobody's coming down from other, well, I shouldn't say other, but they're not coming from galaxies. Or, there's, there's probably some creatures down below the ground in the shell of the earth. Ark, the Covenant Ark, or the Noah's Ark? Should let the giants run the news. I don't know. Well, the Ark of the Covenant actually, I think, was it looked more Egyptian than anything. I think it's very possible that either the the Ark of the Covenant, or a very similar version of that Ark of the Covenant, was found in King Tut's tomb. You ever see that one Ark that they show there? I think that the Old Testament Jerusalem, indeed, Old Testament Jerusalem was not in the land of. Palestine, like I think it is. There's no archaeological evidence whatsoever. For Solomon's Temple, for anything Old Testament in that area. What I think is that the actual land of the pyramids, the Giza Pyramid Complex, was more likely to be the Old Testament Jerusalem. Mount Zion would be the Great Pyramid. And so Egypt was further south, you know. Real Egypt, true Egypt. I think that the pyramid complex, the mortuary temple of the, the small pyramid there, the Menkaure pyramid, was probably the the east side of that was probably Solomon's temple. It's got three layers of case, casing stones that surround the front. It looks like you know in in the book of First Kings it talks about these three layers of stones. It looks very much like that was the actual Solomon's Temple remains. Check it out. East side. Now you don't have to be serious. I'm not serious. I mean, I'm serious when I'm talking, but I was like, nothing is serious anymore.
I mean, I'm, I'm not joking, but I'm not being all serious either. The professors are claiming that the ark was impossible to build, but some say it could have been done. Why did they say it was impossible to build? What's so hard about building an ark? I don't get it. Raiders of the Lost Ark. Mm -hmm. You're sweating and you know you're done. Would be so. Oh, you mean Noah's Ark? Oh, I thought you meant the Ark of the Covenant. I'm sorry. Um, keep in mind that Noah was a lot bigger, probably like 12 feet tall. You know, and uh, he had help from his son in laws. He's probably very smart. Of course, he, I don't have a problem believing that he built it. And as far as like all the different species, and you know, I think that they, they multiplied, they became very diversified over a very short period of time. It says every different kind, not every different species entered the ark. So all these evolution fags that want to deny it was Noah's Ark, they can go fuck, fuck themselves. They can go get bound in FEMA camps to be burned. Fuck them. <laughs> I'm not, don't quote me on that 12 foot tall, I'm saying that pre-flood people live to be bigger and live longer because of the pre-flood atmosphere which had more oxygen due to the fact that there was no glass sky at 100 kilometers high which kept the oxygen separate from the nitrogen. Now we have a mixture of nitrogen and oxygen. just ah <laughs> oh, there's so much evidence not just evidence legends all over the world they wouldn't be corroborating the same flood story from country to country <laughs> you ignorant foolish bastards that think that there was not a global flood I want to punch you in the fucking face no I'm just kidding You fake feel angry, right? Fake now. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's part of all the fake feelings I have. Oh yeah, yeah. Can you give me that link again, please, dear? The, I could scroll up for it, I guess. Oh, there, yeah, there you go. Beautiful. All right, music time.